In this video, I'm going to show you how to install and align an Aviat WTM 4800 E-band radio. In the box with the antenna, you're going to find two tubes of silicone grease, a clear one and a brown one. The brown one is used for all of the threads on our nuts and bolts, so you're going to want to apply this to all of these threads before we assemble it in the antenna. The clear tube is used for the O-rings. We're going to put this on all of the O-ring gaskets as we assemble our antenna. The first step is to mount the bracket onto our pipe here, and I've already done that and I've tightened up these bolts. You'll notice that the antenna is still loose on our bracket, the adjustment bolts are loose. For our first step, we need to make sure that this is all tightened down uh, and there's no wiggling. And the important part about this is when we do our alignment with our level. The next step is to put silicone grease on this O-ring. The next step is to install our polarization puck and our mounting plate. Choose whether it's going to be vertical or horizontal polarization. For E-band, we recommend vertical for most applications. On the polarization puck, there's an alignment pin. That pin right there will go into the notch on the V. So we're going to take this puck and we will put it onto the antenna with that notch facing downwards. The next step is to mount the plate to the back of the antenna. Make sure you put the brown grease on all of the threads for every nut and bolt that you put together. The next step is to level the mounting plate, and we're going to do this on both sides of the link before we attach the radio to the back of the antenna. Now, I've set my level on top, and you'll notice that I've got it loose, and I can adjust the bubble level. What we want to do is completely center this so we're perfectly level, and then we'll go ahead and tighten down. Now that we've leveled our mounting plate and tightened up our four bolts, we can go ahead and loosen up the adjustment bolts on the bracket. As you remember, we had to tighten all this up so that when we leveled this, and as everything is tightened up at the final alignment, that it will come back and pull itself into level. The next step is to put the O-ring into the groove here. Now I've put some silicone on it already, so we've put the O-ring in, and we'll then mount the radio. The next step is to install our scope alignment bracket. This is done by loosening the two bolts at the top of the radio, which hold the radio to the back of the antenna. There are two metal clips that come with the alignment bracket. You're going to want to install those over the nut. This prevents the bracket from walking out as you tighten up the screws, and we'll do this on both sides. The next step is to mount the scope onto our bracket. And we'll turn on the red dot. Now the scope has been calibrated and I've shown this in an earlier video. It's important that you calibrate your scope before you use it for the first time. That way when we mount the bracket to the antenna that the red dot will be perfectly aligned with our beam coming out of the antenna. So since this one's been pre-calibrated, I can now go through and do a rough alignment. I'll look through here, and I can see the red dot, and I'm just going to adjust it by hand to put the dot right on the far end antenna. So I'm looking through the scope, and I'm bringing the red dot onto the far end antenna. And this is our course alignment, and what this will do is this will get us close enough to bring up the radio link. Our final steps, we're still going to use the voltmeter to do our final alignment, but the scope will save many hours of getting the initial alignment going. The next step is to activate the RSL voltage and plug in our voltmeter. But Before we can see the voltage, we need to press the RSL select button 
And we're going to do that depending on which model radio we have. I've got a chart on the screen. Today we're using WTM4800, so just a single press of the button will select RSL. You'll notice that there are two test probe ports, and you're going to plug your voltmeter in there. Red goes into positive, black goes into negative. Okay, we've used the optical scope and we've established a link to the far end. You can see the radio link is up and running. We're coming in around negative 41 dBm. I'm going to start using the adjustment bolt and the voltmeter to do our final alignment. So we're fine movements on here. Okay, we've reached our peak and now we're going back the other way. So we're going to back off just slightly. We've gone back and forth several times with the fine tuning adjustment, one side at a time. So we'll adjust this side, we'll peak it out for our maximum signal strength. Go ahead and let the guy on the other side adjust his, tighten it down. And you're going to do this at least five to ten times where you're looking for the main beam. Eventually with these E-band radios, you're going to find maximum signal strength. Once you've got the Antennas perfectly aligned, tighten down all your bolts, and that will conclude the alignment and installation of your WTM E-band radio.